What's going on guys, Just GC Football here, back again for another video, and this one is very close to my heart, as we're finally doing Tier 2 of the Tier 1 to Tier 10 Challenge of English Football. So today's video takes us to the Championship, and if you follow us, I think you know which team it will be today, as it's the one and only Preston North End. It's finally get around to us, we will cover, so I will tell the story of Preston North End and the history of Preston as well, as we will be doing Preston, as I will take you around Preston as well. And we'll show the other half of Just GC football a good time. This is Preston. So with Preston North End, we were formed in 1863 as we actually began as a cricket club. I bet you didn't know that. But say so we used to play our first matches at the marsh near the River Ribble, which is just at the back of us in Avonham Park here. But say so, which is in the suburb of Ashton, so it's a bit further up because it's not quite in Avonham Park, but it is near the River Ribble. So later that the years, because say so we switched to Moor Park and we called ourselves the North End. Obviously, it's in the North End of Preston. So on the 21st of January 1875, the club leased the field opposite Moor Park on the site of the current Deepdale Stadium, which has been its home ever since that's Deepdale. And it's the world's oldest football ground in the terms of continuous use by a club, which still continues to this day. As that is an incredible achievement, as Deepdale is actually older than Preston North End itself. So the club uh, formed a rugby union team in 1877 as a witness, as a winter fitness activity, but it never really took off. It can never overtake the grasshoppers, so that folded. So in May 1880, a proposal was put forward to adopt the association code or the rules of association football, which was unanimously accepted. And Preston North End was finally born in May 1880. And that is the history of Preston North End of how we began as we played at Deepdale as well. So Preston became one of the first professional clubs by hiring players from Scotland. In 1887, they beat Hyde, Hyde 26-0 in the first round of the FA Cup, a record-winning margin that still exists to this day. Absolutely incredible. So this takes us now into our journey of the Invincible. So in 1888 to 1889, Preston became the first league champions and the first winners of the doubles that won the FA Cup as well, as they were unbeaten in both competitions, not conceding a goal in the FA Cup. As that is absolutely incredible, they went an entire season without losing the game in any cup or league. So I don't think that has been done in English football. So the club has uh, long been known as Proud Preston, as we're very proud Prestonians, and all the Invincibles of the pre previous century set some incredible standards back then as they became immortalised at the time and known as the old Invincibles or what we today call them the Invincibles, the original ones as you now got the new ones Arsenal. So Preston retained the title again in their 1889-1890 seasons, we won it back to back the first division title by now tagged the Invincibles but runner-up spots would have to survive for the next three seasons in 1891, 1892 and 1893 as we've not won the title since then. So in total, we've been league runner-up six times, including the 1891, 1892 and 1893, and also twice in the 1950s as well. As we've come a few times, and the last time we won a major trophy, the which was the FA Cup, was in, way back in 1938 before the breakout of World War II, as we defeated Huddersfield Town 1-0 then, and that team included Bill Shankly. So if you ever wonder why Bill Shankly has a stand named after him, that is why he used to play for Preston North End, and even he would admit that Tom Finney was the best player he ever saw. So we're seeing there is a river ripples because so it may not be the most glamorous city in the world but it is home as I absolutely love Preston as well. I fell in love with the place as it is my birthplace. So if you've ever wondered why I support Preston, that's the reason it's my place of birth. As the saying goes, don't choose your club, they choose you. I was say, and ever since I walked to Deep Dill that first time I fell in love as you support United. I was say, it's a dirty little fact about me. As a kid like that's so a <laughs> glory hunted. As I grew up in teenagers, because I went on my first game in Deepdale 2005, and only real football fans will ever know. As soon as you go inside the stadium, the roar of the atmosphere, the very first time it hits you, it's because you feel like you belong, and that's what I felt with Preston North End. I felt like I belonged ever since I walked my first steps to Deepdale. As I did have a passing interest as a kid in North End, as you did have a fascination. As I mostly grown up on the dark side of the M55, really. 
but I've always had a, but Preston's always had a place in my heart. So when mentioning North End, it's always worth mentioning our prodigal son, which was Sir Tom Finney, Preston's most famous player, absolutely incredible player, and I only wish I could go back in time to watch him. So with Tom Finney, he joined as a teenager in 1938, and his first team debut was delayed until 1946, as it was delayed by World War II, as he was conscripted. So they had to join the army, so that delayed eight years of his life was wasted. So with uh, Sir Tom Finney, he played from 1946 until 1960 when he retired. He's nicknamed the Preston Plumber because of his local business. Finney remains a club's top goal scorer with 187 goals from 433 appearances. And also scored 13 international goals for England. As the last player to play for England was David Nugent back in 2007 May as he scored that cheeky tapping from Jermaine Defoe against Andorra. <laughs> Absolutely love it. He saw his one chance and took it. Absolutely love it. But David Nugent is my favourite Preston player because I absolutely love that guy, especially when we had a decent team. It felt like we were going places in back then, especially 2005 to 2007. So we had an era of arrogance because it felt like something special was happening, but it just never happened at all. Because we've had many close calls to the Premier League, but we just haven't had it yet. So after Sir Tom Finney would retire in 1961, Preston would be relegated to the second division and we have not played in the top flight of football since 1961. So we've gone an incredible 63 years without top flight football. As we've got one of the longest ones still going. Because it's something that haunts us, especially after 50 clubs have played in the Premier League and we still haven't yet, as we're one of the biggest that still haven't played in the Premier League. It's absolutely incredible for a team of our history and stature. But no offense, you could call us the old ladies because they're always unlucky. I think me and Preston just go hand in hand, especially with my dating life. It's because I, I think it's a reason why I support North End, is we're very, very alike. <laughs> the Preston North End are my one true love. So with North End, we did have a memorable season in 1963 1964 when we finished third in the second division and reached their 1964 FA Cup final against West Ham. So we lost 3 2. That's not the only time we've, they've broken our hearts, especially in 2005 as well. So denied us a place in the Premier League as beat us in the Championship. West Ham final United here attacking Zamora. Zamora! As that name would haunt us 19 years later still. Between the histories, because they're pressing, we first relegated to the third tier for the first time in the 1969-1970 season. Although we would win their promotion again immediately in 71, because we would bounce between the bottom two divisions for a very long time. Because especially in the, from 1981 to 2000s, so it's been an incredible 19 seasons then. Especially in the dark era, as I say, especially in 1986, when we would have to apply for a re-election and finish at 23rd. So that was a real, real dark point for Preston North End. But a year later, as I say, we will get promoted under John McGrath in 1987. The team recovered, and then it'd be a false stone. We spent another three years in the bottom division after then, from, 90, from 1993 to 1996. But we did discover some magic, as I say, with John Beck. One thing he did do, he got the atmosphere back. He made the pressing fans believe again, as he got the town end absolutely rocking, as it felt, after, especially after the 80s, and us uh, over a decade of malaise. Preston North End finally felt like they were back. The turning point in our modern industry will be 1994 when we had a takeover from the heating manufacturer at Baxi. But their ownership would end in June 2002, but they did absolutely incredible things for Preston North End. The team's central defender at the time, David Moyes, 84, began his managerial career when appointed by the Baxi Control Board in February 1998. So Moyes was successful manager team to the third tier championship in 2000, as Preston reached a 2001 third final losing to Bolton Wanderers that day, 3 0. No one would deny him, Bolton were a much better team on the day and deserved that promotion. But in 2005 player final under Billy Davis, Preston were beaten 1 0, as I mentioned before, by West Ham, as that was closest and probably. It's a weird thing is, we did the double over him that time as well, because I really should have got promoted. That felt like our golden chance they were wasting, and in 2006 we'll lose to Leeds in the playoff semi. And then again, 2007, we're going a massive blip as it costs us our playoffs, playoff spots. We finished seventh as we just couldn't see it over the line, especially with the January recruits as we were top of the league going into the new year. So from the backs itself and departure of Moyes to Everton in 2002, the team was established in the second tier throughout the 2000s. But more custom winding up order in 2010 and relegation to third tier in 2011, the taxation issue was resolved by local businessman Trevor Hemmings, already a show already a shareholder who bought a controlling interest in June 2010 because he's had a long affiliation with Preston North and uh, Hemmings has. Because we're very thankful to say without his back in to say you may may not like him or you may not love him but without him we wouldn't be in the championship without him we wouldn't survive. That is a uh, cold hard truth. 
But the team were promoted again by the playoffs after four seasons in League One in 2015 as we absolutely smashed Swindon in the player final to beat him 4-0 that day. But since that be our first win at Wembley since 1938 and our first attempt to win in the playoffs in 10 attempts. We've got one of the worst in the country along with Brentford with one success in 10. Shows how unlucky we are. We're really, really unlucky. We've got a terrible record. But that moment would last a generation as many pressing fans will remember that day very, very fondly, especially with Jermaine Beckford hat trick that day. And also, you see the famous pictures. Jason's in that as well, just GC. You see him celebrate as I actually missed the fourth goal, so I'm up in the toilet. So, with the picture of the pressing fans bouncing that day, you see him in his blue top standing out with his ginger hair. But the final thing to mention now is Deepdale. So, when back to you took control, I was going to say they've made a plan to invest in Deepdale. I was going to say they absolutely turned it around into the monster that you see today. Is it's absolutely incredible. It's got to say it's based off the Genoa and Sampdoria Stadium. There's Luigi Ferrara. It's got to say it's an absolutely incredible stadium. So that's what it's based off. If you ever look at the stadium, that's where Deepdale comes from, where we've got the idea from. Because there'll be a project that started in 1994 to start rebuilding Deepdale. And then eventually it will be completed in 2008, with the last one being done, the Invincible, the Invincible's Pavilion. Because there's a number of seen it have been uh, built. Because it's absolutely fun to watch it get developed and also this lights because one thing I love about deep down is the lights it's what's unique about the stadium absolutely beautiful ground there. I don't think I'm being biased when I say it I absolutely love our stadium but one thing to mention is also the football museum that Baxi brought because it was sold to Manchester in 2012 but that my friends is Preston North End and that is our history as I'll show you guys around Preston now as what we're doing now, we're just waiting for Josh GC to come into town as well as show him what Preston is made of as I'll show him a good time around Preston and what there is to offer. This is Preston North End. One thing I did forget to mention is because I Preston North End. We've all spent four seasons out in the last 24 in League One, spent 20 out of the 24 season in Championship. Not bad going, but like every Preston North End, I just want to say in the Premier League, just have that one glorious season, just like all our rivals have around us. That's all I ask for as a Preston fan, just to see us one time in the Premier League, just to get that monkey off our backs. Welcome to the Gateway North, it's going to say Preston it connects you all over the country, absolutely massive hub is. Right, so fun fact about Preston, it's going to say it used to be called Priestown, so there used to be like a priest and that's where it gets its name from, Preston Priestown. So it started in the 11th, uh, in 1100s, because then they got Guild Merchant China in 1179. So, have you ever wondered why we have the. So, we've got a Guild Merchant China in 1979, which is why we have the Preston Guild every 20 years because of that, as we used to be a market town and there was a guild. So, so that's a fun fact about Preston for you. So, I've always loved it in the train station. We're just waiting for JSGC to come in because uh, we'll start the day with a pint. Because it's expensive, is uh, this has cost £5.5 for five, uh, pint strongbo in the Preston train bar. But here we are at Preston train station now, but as you can see, we've got a special guest. Hello! He's finally arrived. So welcome Hi. to Preston. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna show him the good a good time in Preston, show what Preston's all what Preston is made of. So we'll give him a good blast here in Preston. But well, it's just like maybe it's showing me a good time. So what we're going to do is go say we'll go around the pub. Just go say it's always underrated Preston. So I'll show you the best of Preston. Absolutely love Preston. So let's get started. As I will start off in the old Vic here. Starting off in the old Vic. So we're doing a little bit different today, so we're starting in Old Vic, it opens at 11 o'clock, so that's something new I found out. As you can see, we're on the cider again here, so Inches Cider. And get this, I didn't think it'd be dearer than the train station, but it is, so £5.20 a pint. It's going to say with train station for Strongbow, it cost me £5.05p. And so how does it taste? One thing I will say, it's a bit sweeter than your Strombo, it's because it's a bit more bitter than Strombo, but that is a nice one. It's because I don't often have inches, but that is nice. I probably rate it as solids. 7.5 out of 10. 
So it's had a connoisseur. What do you think here? That's going to be a test. There's a change of barrel between pints. So yeah, it's mine's top of the barrel, yours is bottom of the barrel, yours <laughs> might differ mine, here. Bottom, bottom of the barrel is <laughs> £5.20, this is scoring well, I'm not going to be very happy. Won't be a good start. Not when they're trying to show you the best of press in here. Oh, that's a nice pint. What's sweet it's in it? It's good, yeah. yeah. It's nice and sweet, a bit creamy. Um, I think I could do a second pint of that, to be honest. So. Okay, it's surprised how sweet it was. 7.7. That's not a bad side. Oh, doing 7.7s. Mm -hmm. But that is the old bit complete. So what I'm going to do now, I will take just you see to one of my favourites, <laughs> which is the Winkley Ale House. We're having a good time. Certainly, oh, good start. I thought I'd say it because there's a lot of choice here, especially at the Winkley Ale House. Until you told me that, I was looking at the trade. I thought, I'm not having this until I've seen it myself at home. So we're in the Winkley, Winkley Street Ale House, because it's always one of my favourite places. I like the choice, because they have a lot of choice. So I'm on the straight out of Hobbiton. So this 50. is £4.50. It's from New Zealand as well. Because I love the name, it appeals to me to that, because I'm a little bit of a nerd. Because I can't tell. <laughs> so with Jay, he's on the sh triple vintage. So this is a cider. £4.80 and mine has cost £4.50 so this has come under £10 and £9.30 can't complain the prices are good as well so mine with the appearance you can tell straight away what that is because say that's an IPA so mine is 4.2% so it's a little bit on the weak side but I'm still going to enjoy this so it's from the Nightjar Brew Company give me that taste test so this is straight out of this is straight out of Hobbiton 4.2%, how does it taste? Mm. So with this, it's floral and citrusy. It's got to say, I like citrus and floral IPAs. I think it's a solid 7 out of 10. It's got to say, it does the job. It's a nice one. So, Mr. Cider. <laughs> Connoisseur. I'm looking forward to this, a Somerset Cider. They never yeah. know Somerset, yeah. They're disappointed. What do you think? So this is triple vintage cider. I think it's 4.9 this. It tastes quite strong. It's a strong one. Mm, I need another, I need a third taste. It needs a first, is this Aston Villa vibe? Is it cutthroat? No. That's beautiful. 9.1 out of 10. Is it better than inches? Really nice cider. Far better. Far better. Ah, uh, Somerset for you. That's excellent. Pub number two can play the Wickley Street Ale House because I absolutely love it. So, Joe, what cider did you think of that? Very good. Um, it was good stuff. Yeah, good. Show me a good time. I'm looking forward to the Black the Horse. The Black Horse, not the Black Bull. Who's in the Black Horse? Where are we? Black Bull. Right, so we're in the wrong pub. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is take a J to the Black Horse, pop up number three, just up ahead. Not the Black Ball. Not the Black Ball. There's... Rain. There we go, look, I'm taking it to the cider bar. Go on then. Come on, Drake, take us in. Pub number three, Black Horse. Cheers, mate. So we're in the Black Horse, so we're on the Celtic Warrior here, so we're on the flat cider. £5.30 a pint. £5.30, so... Right, Nothing gonna... hurts me more than going to a fiver for I'm a pint. Try this. Come on, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get through it, don't worry, you've got about 20 years of me, Sam. 5.5. I want to see what you think of that. That's going to be interesting. So I'm on the Celtic Warrior here. Yeah, no, not my favourite. Let's see what you think. Oh, you got to take a bigger sip than that. <laughs> what are these sips? I know it's not your favourite lot. No, oh, what do you think? I think I should have gone fizzy. <laughs> you know, maybe we made a bad choice. They only had that Henry Weston's, Harry Weston thing on. I know I could drink it, I think we'll go for it. 
I think it's five out of ten. Yeah, I agree. Not not the best. Where are we heading to next? So, I'm hoping it should knock it up. The Plough was one of my favourite places. We have been told there was like a cider festival on today upstairs, but it was closed, wasn't it? It's not open till 8 p.m. <laughs> it's not quite 8 p.m. Never mind. Okay, plow up next after we've had our not so favourite pints. Having a good time though. So, as you can see, we're in the plow. It's because it's one of my little happy places, I've always said. But finally, we get to do the cocktail. So, I'm on aviation. So, with aviation, it's a nice gin cocktail. If you never have it, I recommend it. Jay is on the espresso it's martini. Fresh. It's his first time being here, so I'm. Very excited to see what he thinks of it. Nine point six. It's beautiful stuff. It's nice because it's a really nice relaxing vibe. Everything about cocktails are nice. Do you know what I love about them? It's beautiful. What? I love that. It's art. Yeah. Passion. People have their own interpretations of it, they have their own variants, they, they put a little bit more, a little bit less in. It's well made, passion's put into it. Pints are very easily pulled, it's a barrel. Yeah. This takes our decadence and passion to, to go into making the drink and making it delicious and making it their way. The bartender upstairs was telling us that they've got their own way, they do their little, own little quirky things about it. And, uh, Aaron, Known as Nick Sid knows that these I've got the different, own way, ways, yeah. the different ways of doing things are just it. how somebody else would do it. It's a, you know, everybody's different. Someone might do it one way, someone, someone might do it the other way. It's all about it being well made and then flavours combining for it to be very nice and make it a very enjoyable drink. Yeah, it's more expensive. But Aaron was describing as we came into here, it's it's very us. If you've ever watched any of Nick Sid stuff and we've gone on to our, our vlogs and we do different it's very much all said it, very much me. Drinks. There's a decadent vibe in here, yeah. we like the, the decor, we like the... Everything about it, I love it. We like the benches, we like the drinks, we're having a good time. This is an excellent drink. And to me it's a nice pace away from the pint that we're having as yeah. well. It's an excellent drink, 9.6. Very well made, very well made. So that's saying it's because it's one of my little happy places because anything with cocktails I absolutely love because it's very decadent everything about it is just very me because it shows a little bit of my personality the plow. I love the deco, I love cocktails because anything with beer but this is a little bit different from what we normally do. Not often I get a chance to do a cocktail and a present home game. Because it's one of those perfect little things if it's on a day now this is where I'd take a date. It's very nice, it's very nice silly made that aviation sugar. I'd probably give it a solid 8 out of 10. Because it's very nice of it, because it's an energy cocktail. But every night it's their own version or the own way of making cocktail. That's what I love about it. That's good. It's a very nice one, because aviation is beautiful. But it's very much me and I absolutely love it. And I recommend, if you do go to a plow, this is one of my favourite cocktail places. It's impressive. Do, uh, I do recommend it if you wish to try them out. As I said, it's very much us because it's a nice relaxing vibe, it's a nice cocktail. It's very much me and Jay like that. Because if I want to take a day, this is where to go. Because I absolutely love the flowers, because I love the gin cocktails, because anything with cocktails, it's very much me. How nice does that sound? The real thing is, what you want to know is how much it costs. So for the aviation and espresso martini, it costs 20 pounds. So it's talking about a 10 pound of cocktails. Because it's not unreasonable. Because it's about the standard. You pay for what you get. You pay for what you get. Because if you love cocktails, you're always talking about a tenner or under. I'm a bad influence. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've got the bad influence next to me. <laughs> it's bringing out the mix in me. So one of the cocktails, one of the shots here. So Joe, talk us through it here. Uh, this is, uh, it's a four pounder shot. It is a variant of the old fashioned. I asked for something 
a shop that involved the Woodford Reserve, because I know you love the Woodford Reserve, so the Woodford okay. Reserve is involved. We've got two La Louisiana cocktails that we're going to enjoy in a minute. I think yep. the grand total for everything combined is just under £33. Okay. Not the cheapest, but also, as I always say, you pay for what you, what you get. get yeah. So if you're looking for good stuff, you're going to end up paying a little bit more, which uh, is is always something on the channel that we are we are, we're looking at, isn't it? So I'll try to show you a good time for us and what it's made of. Because a plow is very much me. I'm hoping to show yeah. that side of me for you like that. This is a bar that would belong in the big cities and the London, especially in Manchester, Manchester. Yeah, Manchester, your Liverpool, Liverpool, your Birmingham, London. Yeah, uh, it's it's decadent. It's us. So cheers. It is. It's nice. Cheers. Here's to hopefully a Preston victory. And three points, yeah. I'm Come on, you know, fella, let's do this. I'm going to go po real positive. 4 0 Preston North End today. Uh, and yeah, yeah. cheers. 4 1 PA. Yeah. That's a lovely shot. Normally I go, Ugh. That's a horrible shot. That's a really good shot. It's nice, I did. Plowing Preston. Yeah. You're an away fan, there's no restrictions or anything. Get yourself down here, it's decadent. It's lovely scenery. Staff are absolutely Beautiful. brilliant. The drinks, even more importantly, are absolutely brilliant. Go and check it out. Big shout out to the plow. It's beautiful, as I said. I want to show Josh to see a little bit of my personality. Mm. Say, I'm thinking delivers. Is our uh, La, La Louisiana. So, uh, La Louisiana. So, this is like your bourbon uh, base uh, spirit. Very tangy. Very tangy because it's, well, it's very much whiskey dominated, because especially with bourbon. Ooh. Very much me, but very strong. Stuff. <laughs> it's strong, whether you like it, I'm not too sure. Because <laughs> I think you want the corn oil, you want the rum side of it. We'll go on that next. <sighs> mm. It's good stuff, it's good stuff. We're having a good time here. And that's all I'm bothered about. Anything with cocktails, I love it, because hey, but I'm sure just you see a good time in Preston and so I'm happy about that. All we ever say when we're on our uh, away days, uh, obviously today's our home day, all we ever say is, all we're after is a good time yeah. and that's what we're having, which is, to me, I don't know about you, but it means more to me than winning a game or getting three points. It's all about having... It is. Because hey, I will show you the best Preston. And I'm we're having a, time, a good mate. time, so cheers everybody. So and hopefully three points to North End. Let's see if we can do better. this. Yeah. Three points today, yeah. make it even better. We're having a good time. And the first question I know you got to ask is, where is the other half of Just UC football? Well, we had a brilliant time on the Good Friday, but unfortunately couldn't make tonight's game. So I'm going to continue where we left off. But say we had a brilliant time. That's what it's all about. Footballs. Because it's all about making memories, and you just can't beat it at all. It is the same journey that I've done for 20 years. I was saying I still can never ever go over the side. I was saying nothing beats Deep Dale, no lads, as you'll see it later on. As this is home. I was say walking through Moor Park and descend on Deep Dale. The same journey that I've done with my father. I was going with my brother and my uncle. So it's all about different generations of pressing fans from grandfather to father to son. And that is what football is all about. Inside deep down, absolutely love it. Right, for score prediction, I'll go 2 1 North End. Time coming up, can't say Huddersfield don't deserve to take the lead here. They've had a few good tries in, they finally buried one. 1 0 Huddersfield at Deepdale. 1 0 Huddersfield at Deepdale. Not a lot to say, absolutely awful from North End. They really need to get going. Huddersfield, no good players at all. Must do better in the second half. <laughs> Penalty for Aston there, trying for an equaliser. Yes, it's a celebration! Come on! Just like that, no 
Pepper in the back in there, all level there. What about Dina? Come on! So less than 10 minutes to go to Diva, can press and get the winner, we really need to win if we want to keep our playoffs hopes, we keep our playoffs hopes alive here. Second half really turned around, absolutely magic from North End. Sure, they still got a little bit of fire in the belly that this dream is not over yet. So six minutes added on here at Deepdale. Major Preston Faithful here, absolutely magic. One and only North End. All on North End. And that concludes our story of Preston North End. This is Preston North End. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Judge YouTube for more football content. It's been a pleasure to cover my team, Preston North End. And this is the story of Preston North End. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. See you on the next one.